Hey everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Gary Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a medication known as Resedronate. Its brand name is Actinel. Now before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. And quickly, if at any time during this video you find this information to be valuable, please consider leaving a like on the video as it would really help me with the YouTube algorithm. So first, what will we cover in this presentation? We'll start by talking about how resedronate works. We'll then discuss indications or reasons we would prescribe this medication to a patient, followed by contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe resedronate. We'll then discuss examples of dosing, and then stick around to the end where we'll talk about side effects with percentages. So how does resedronate work? Well, resedronate binds to bone hydroxyapatite. It inhibits osteoclast activity at the cellular level, thereby modulating bone metabolism. In terms of indications or reasons we would prescribe this medication to a patient, we often see it used in the treatment of osteoporosis, and it can also be used in the treatment of Paget's disease. With respect to contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe resedronate, we wouldn't give this medication to a patient who had a hypersensitivity to resedronate or any other component of the formulation. If a patient had esophageal abnormalities that delayed esophageal emptying, they would not be able to use this medication. As well as patients with hypocalcemia, they must correct this before starting this medication. And lastly, if a patient had the inability to sit or stand upright for at least 30 minutes, they would also not be able to use resedronate. Now what about dosing with resedronate? So in the treatment of osteoporosis, we would typically see 35 milligrams orally once weekly. It's recommended to take with 6 to 8 ounces of water and at least 30 minutes before the first food or drink of the day. Some patients may also require supplement, supplemental calcium and vitamin D while using this medication. Now, as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using resedronate. So I'll go over some of those here now. 8 to 11% of patients may experience a rash, while 3 to 12% may experience abdominal pain. Constipation seems to happen 3 to 13% of the time, and diarrhea happens 5 to 11% of the time. 4 to 11% may experience indigestion, and 3.5 to 4% may experience nausea. A backache may happen to 6 to 28% of patients. Urinary tract disease may occur 11% of the time, and up to 10% may experience influenza-like illness. Now, some more serious but rare side effects would be a hypersensitivity reaction, peripheral edema, or osteonecrosis of the jaw. That's all we're going to talk about today with resedronate or actinel. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.